Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, everybody, from wherever we are. Thank you very much for coming to the latest of our series of webinar. Today on technology and national dementia plans, lessons from the Korean experience. We have hundreds of you registered for about, from about 93 countries. So thank you very much for being with us. Um, I'm Paola Berberino, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Alzheimer's Disease International. It has been my dream to do this webinar for a long time. I went to Korea with D.Y. Suharia, who is going to be our first speaker, about three years ago, and I was amazed. Korea is an amazing country. It wasn't the first time I went, and it uses technology to incredible uh, aids. But what really struck me was the way that the National Dementia Plan, which is now in Korea in, in several iterations, and Professor Kim will tell us about that later, how it has married a fantastic infrastructure of technology. Nevertheless, the history of how these things happen is one of the most interesting things. Professor Bear later on will tell us more about how then also AI has been applied to in particular diagnosis. Now, let me get to the next slide. Uh, we are uh, going to remind you, I'm going to remind you that we are a charity and that uh, if uh, uh, we are continuing to keep this webinar series completely free of charge, but if you can make a donation, you can go to our website and that will enable us to continue to keep this series free. Thank you so much to the many of you who have already done that. Let me introduce my speakers for today. D.Y. Suharia is the Regional Director for Asia Pacific of Alzheimer's Disease International. My beloved colleague, amazing. She's just finished fasting for a Ramadan and she's joining us in a minute. Professor Seong Yoon King is in the Department of Psychiatry of the Azan Medical Center. He's an amazing speaker and he will lead us in detail about the National Dementia Plan of Korea. We all have huge amounts to learn from this. Uh, to finish, Professor Yong Bin Bae, Associate Professor of Seoul National University uh, in uh, Korea at the Bundang Hospital, will go through with us on uh, artificial intelligence and diagnostics in particular. Now, uh, just to remind you, I'm going to keep everybody very much to schedule. If you have questions, please write them in the question and answer box. You can use the chat line as ever uh, to send messages to tell us who you are. But please put your questions in the Q&A box, which will allow us to pick it up. The webinar is being recorded and will be made available on YouTube. We only have an hour, so I'll move forward without further ado to our polls, which will be run by the wonderful Jane and Katie, who are with us today in the backdrop of this webinar. So could you please let us know whether your country provides dementia care across your nation, including risk reduction and prevention and dementia-friendly community? You have four options. Yes, it only provides it in city, it only provides it in the rural area, or we do not have any provision at all. By the time I finish speaking, you should have been able to vote for that. So Jane will close the poll in a second. And we should have the results. Yes, you do provide some dementia care. 13, most of you, 69%, 13 only in city, 3% only in rural areas, which confirms what we always know that rural areas are less served. And 15% say, uh, unfortunately, they have no provision at all, which is ever so sad to hear about. We are closing this poll now. And uh, I'm not sure if we have another poll, Jane. Yes. Uh, does your government have a dementia registry of people living with dementia? This is a very important question that actually I am asking you. Do you have a registry? So do you know who are the people living with dementia in your country? Is there a formal national register? Yes, no, or you don't know? Please answer that. So um, I think we are going to close this poll, very simple answers. 
And the answers are yes, you do have a registry 70%, no, 50%, which is huge, don't know 33%. Well, there's a lot to learn from this, from today's webinar. So thank you very much. I think we have uh, concluded our polls and I'm now going to hand over the floor to D.Y. Suharia. D.Y., please, over to you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much. Um, as you can see, these are pictures from our visit uh, in Korea back in February 2019. And um, I'd like to just simply share how the ADI Asia Pacific Regional Office relationship with Korea has developed uh, through the years. Uh, back in 2018, um, the Korean National Institute of Dementia or the, the team were invited in our meetings. And from that uh, presentations, we learned that Korea has uh, dementia plans um, 3.0 at that time. And now we know that they, they have uh, reached uh, 4.0. And the, what they have achieved within 10 years uh, of the, after the first plan was Korea has three dementia diagnosis services in 256 dementia care centers or dementia ANSOM centers, uh, which we will hear later on from our amazing speakers. Um, and, back, and then after the 2018 um, presentations of our friends in Korea, we learned everything about um, all the innovations uh, and all the programs um, from, from the technology as well. These are photos of uh, Paula and myself and our friends from uh, Asia Pacific, uh, uh, from Brunei, Taiwan, and Japan, they're also invited. And we had the pleasure to also meet um, um, Director General uh, uh, Sok Yo. Uh, I, I, I never, I, I'm never able to pronounce it well. <laughs> but at this time, uh, in this moment, we'd like to learn more from our speakers and we continue to be inspired uh, on the impact of the Korean um, Koreans on the work on dementia. Uh, what I wanna also share is the, the uh, event that we had in um, Korea back in 2019 were focusing on global action against dementia the policy responses on dementia in Asia Pacific, where we hear stories from Taiwan, Indonesia, Japan. Uh, and we also uh, explore the innovations in the national dementia management of Korea. And this is what we will learn today on technology and national dementia plans. Thank you, back to you, Paula. Thank you ever so much, uh, D.Y. And without further ado, I cede the floor to Professor Kim. Professor Kim, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chang Yun Kim and I'm very uh, excited and happy to give a talk about the National Dementia Plan of Korea. Next slide, please. Well, uh, I'll talk about the historical backgrounds and developments of fight against the dementia in Korea first and then talk about what's new in the uh, fourth National Dementia Plan. And I'd like to also mention the backgrounds of national plans. Uh, that is, what was the key point of the successful implementation of the national plans? And of course, I'll also mention uh, how we are doing in the era of COVID-19 pandemic uh, situation. Next slide, please. Well, as you might already know, uh, Korea is experiencing a very, very rapid expansion of elderly population for the uh, last 30 years. The elderly in Korea in 2020 is already over 15% compared to the world average of 9%. Of course, this number is related with the decreasing numbers of newborn child which is less than 1.0. It's around uh, uh, 0.8 or 0.9 these days, which means the national population will be decreasing in the long run. The prevalence of dementia is also increasing very fast too. More than 10% of the elderly uh, has dementia, according to the National Dementia Survey, which is performed every four years. The percentage of dementia is expected to grow uh, to reach 12% in 2014 40, 
and then to 16% in 2050. Next slide. Um, if we look back on the history of the dementia policies in Korea, it all started with a declaration of war against the dementia in 2008. The first national dementia plan was established and after four years, the Dementia Management Act was made. The National Institute of Dementia was founded accordingly and worked as the headquarter of national policies. The second National Dementia Plan was implemented that year and provincial dementia centers were established in major big cities like uh, Seoul, Busan, Gwangju, et cetera. In 2014, policies to reduce the burdens of caregivers were made. And in uh, 2015, the third National Dementia Plan was set up as a five-year plan expanding to the end of 2020. Uh, in the middle, in 2017, there has been a major change in the governance system of dementia centers. First, the National Dementia Initiative was declared, uh, which was a kind of manifesto uh, for the National Dementia Plan. And secondly, the central government took charge of the local municipal dementia centers and the government expanded the dementia centers up to 255 uh, 56 local dementia centers nationwide. That was the nationwide expansion of the dementia centers. And the government also started to pay for the expenses for dementia diagnosis and evaluation from that year. Since 2018, the central and provincial governments are expanding the dementia friendly hospitals and started to provide the public a guardianship service to support the financial handling uh, for dementia patients. And the fourth National Dementia Plan has started uh, from this year for five years. Next slide. In this slide, you can see that um, the Dementia Management Act was a kind of a blueprint for the National Dementia Plans. And according to this act, the government uh, has to build the national dementia plans every five years. And it specifies the range and scope and goals of the dementia plans in it, including the registration of the patient and the establishment of national headquarters and local dementia centers nationwide, et cetera. Next slide. And these are the major characteristics of the past uh, National Dementia Plans. The first and second National Dementia Plan was mainly focused on the early diagnosis and prevention of dementia, as well as the coordination of various dementia care infrastructures. But the first two plans were criticized for being too provider-centered and the lack of appropriate measurement tools of the policy achievements. So at the third National Dementia Plan, general framework was made in accordance with the OECD dementia policy framework. And the service was well shaped to be more user oriented and optimal evaluation indices were also developed uh, to measure the uh, success or failure of the policies and projects. And uh, maybe uh, we can skip this uh, slide, the next one. Okay. okay. The fourth national uh, dementia plan is uh, basically the expansion and sophistication of the third one, but with some emphasis on social solidarity and demand-oriented services and emphasizing comprehensiveness. And the scope of the fourth National Dementia Plan 
spans from healthy adult uh, to the people with dementia. And the key point is to connect various services from various resources uh, to make it more cost effective and which is orchestrated by the local dementia centers. Next slide. Well, uh, this is a rather busy slide, but it is just one slide description summary of fourth national dementia plan. As you can see in the first line, the vision of the fourth national dementia plan is to build a dementia safe, dementia free society for people with dementia and their family and the community. I think the main goal is well expressed in this phrase of staying safe where you live. One of the goal is uh, the registration rate in the local dementia centers, which is currently uh, just uh, around 60%, but we hope to raise it up to 80% at the end of uh, fourth national dementia plan. And uh, this specialized dementia management and care has four sectors, which is prevention and management, focusing on the early stage of dementias and dementia care in the community and the reducing of the burden. And in the right column, uh, you can see the policy making infras also have a, a four sectors and goals. The advancement of dementia management system and to strengthening the infrastructures and to support the research and technology development and to establish a dementia friendly society. Next slide, please. And the most important building blocks of the dementia plan is the local dementia centers as you can see here in the map as the green dots. And the red dots are supervising metropolitan or provincial dementia centers, which is 17 nationwide. And those centers are in a very close connection and reciprocal interaction with the National Institute of Dementia, the headquarter for dementia planning and policies. As you can see in the map, uh, there are uh, some dense areas and some sparse areas, and we are uh, working hard uh, to make it more accessible uh, for the patients to the local dementia centers. Next slide, please. The local dementia center is called the Dementia Anjim Center. Anjim is a Korean word for relief or comfort or reassurance. And uh, each dementia center has about 20 to 25 personnel uh, with the backgrounds of medicine, nursing, or social welfare and occupational therapies. Their role is to provide the screening and early diagnosis for uh, high-risk populations and to register them onto the national registry system and to provide family support and education and to provide daycare services and to heighten the public awareness through activities like dementia partnership programs, et cetera, and to provide prevention activities like a physical fitness and brain fitness programs under the supervision and support from the National Institute and the provincial centers. Next one. And this is the ANSYS system and comprehensive dementia register system, which is run by the uh, central government. And uh, it is used by local dementia centers, local dementia Anjim centers. As you can see in this dashboard, you can have a closer look uh, at the current state of regional dementia registries and statistics and the number of subjects who underwent screening or detailed evaluation, or those who are under different diagnostic stages, et cetera. And also the cognitive rehabilitation program services or family supports provided in real-time basis. Next one. 
And last year, uh, at the rightmost column, you can see the number of registrants to the local dementia centers are a little bit less than 4 million people. And the number of dementia patients registered hitherto is uh, 456,000 people nationwide, which is about 12% of all registrants. The remaining 88% of subjects are uh, normal subjects, uh, subjective memory complaints, and mild cognitive impairments as, or depression patients, etc. According to the National Epidemiological Survey, current number of dementia patients in Korea is estimated to be 832,000. Uh, so about 55 to 60% uh, of dementia patients are registered to this ANSYS system. So we hope to increase that number up to 80% at the end of the National Plan 4. Next one. So I'd like to mention uh, how uh, it was able, how we were able to, uh, to implement the National Dementia Plan successfully. I think there are some uh, major factors and I think the mandatory national medical insurance system, which started in 1977, uh, played a major role. Uh, though at first it was faced with huge objections because it was uh, uh, obligatory, mandatory uh, national health plan uh, implemented by military regime at that time. But now uh, all of the populations are by the, uh, covered by this insurance system. And it has been almost 40 years and according uh, along with this medical insurance system, uh, the long-term care insurance, uh, which started in 2008 to reduce the caregiver burden for the elderly, also acted a major backbone data structure of this uh, national dementia plan. And the long-term care insurance, uh, even though its size is less than six or 7%, of medical insurance in size, uh, this market is getting larger and larger and expected to grow much bigger soon. As you can see in the diagram uh, on the right panel, uh, the insured person receives a healthcare uh, uh, service from the hospitals and pays about uh, 40 to 50% of the medical expenses, about some cancer patients or specialized uh, disease entities pay only 5 to 10 percent of the medical expenditures. The remaining expenses are reimbursed to the service provider by the NIS and HIS, uh, but only after the review by the HIRA, H-I-L-A, Health Insurance Review and Assessment Board. Next one. Another background of the implementation of dementia plan is the experience of local dementia centers, uh, which started way before the national dementia plans. These centers were spontaneously set up in the major cities in Seoul, Busan, and other major cities, and was uh, utilizing their own registry system and services. And in 19, uh, in uh, 2017, as I said before, the central government took over the, the uh, dementia centers and expanded them to nationwide 256 uh, dementia centers. The good news uh, was that each dementia centers are provided with standardized and effective action protocols, financial subsidies from the central government, and be able to provide better services uh, for the patients. But the bad news is that some centers have their uh, unique social demographic characteristics. So they do not fit into the standard model. They may do better if they develop their own program for themselves. So the key is the balance between the standard model and the region specific programs. 
Uh, for example, uh, some uh, big cities have a very good accessibility to the cent dementia centers. A few minutes walk or a few minutes drive, but some centers in the rural areas uh, have a poor accessibility. So we uh, have to solve these problems. Next slide, please. Another point I'd like to mention is that the nation health plan and the data gathering system can act like a synergistic couple, synergistic win-win duo. That is, uh, the dementia plan can produce very useful, good uh, health data, and the good health data can be utilized and analyzed to set up a realistic, useful policies and plans. Now, uh, in this open government, the public institutions are very eager to provide health data for the public research and education or policy making. The NIS, National Health Insurance System, is providing the anonymized health data to the public through the National Health Information Sharing Service, which you can access online or offline. The HERA is also expanding their public data access service with the claim data. This two data set is basically very similar and include the diagnosis and medical service provided and medications prescribed, uh, prescribed and so on. And as you can see in this slide, uh, you can have a, a good access to the data and utilize them uh, as a good source for medical research and pol uh, policy making. Uh, the number of publications using NIS or HERA database are rapidly increasing. And to see the next slide, uh, if you check the PubMed uh, with the terms like claim or NIS or HERA and dementia, you can see the results ranging from body weight change and dementia and others like the missing teeth and dementia and so on. When combined with other open data set uh, provided by the uh, Ministry of Statistics and the police stations and national weather services, you can come up with very exciting and interesting uh, informations that can be utilized in policy making. And uh, I'd like to mention the uh, effect of the COVID-19 situation uh, that uh, brought, uh, that has been brought to the National Dementia Plan implementation. The plan itself remains the same, but there has to be uh, made some modification to the uh, projects and priorities. And lots of the dementia centers uh, have uh, going online, as you can see in the pictures below, the assessment and homeschooling uh, for the elderly in the left picture uh, we call it silver garden, uh, which is derived from the kindergarten, uh, but for the elderly, it's a silver garden and lots of physical activity programs and social gathering programs are going online as you can see in the pictures. And the dementia partner programs are going online too, as well as the annual CME courses for dementia specialists too. Next one. And uh, paradoxically, uh, this social distancing situation has brought an expansion of contents and devices and apps and platforms and devices uh, in the online ecosystem. It's a kind of an explosion and flourishing of the uh, various kind of uh, experimental devices. And we witnessed the uh, various experimental gadgets and services, both government-driven and industry-driven too, in, in the education field and culture, marketing, welfare, as well as in medicine. As you can see at the pictures below, uh, there are online galleries and art school for the elderly. And in the middle, you can see the 
AI, a robot assisted physical activities. And on the right, you see the cooking class for the dementia patients and the families and those who are living alone. And there are even contents that teach the elderly how to avoid voice fishing. Next one. And uh, there has been some changes uh, to the uh, research uh, priorities too. It was rather a rearrangement or reprioritizing the R&D process uh, for the fourth national dementia plan. And there is a high demand for IT integration of dementia prevention, evaluation, and care and education, et cetera. And we are witnessing a rapid increase in uh, public or private uh, request for proposals for digital therapeutics and telemedicines. And the government, uh, in combination with the Department of Health and Department of Science and ICT, Department of Industry and Department of Education is also working together uh, to come up with a very uh, visible and tangible outcomes. Of course, there are some concerns uh, for issues uh, about this uh, chaotic rearrangement of R&D processes. Since uh, this national uh, plan is evolving around many stakeholders like medicine, social welfare, and policies, and IT technology and industries, I think we have to take a, a very cautious and prudential steps. Some examples may be uh, the legal liabilities of dementia care and the definitions or accreditation of the medical devices or non-medical devices or activities and the impact on economy, the reduction of human employment, et cetera. We have a lot of very, uh, uh, many things to think about. And the next slide, I'd like to wrap up uh, mentioning that the increasing number of elderly in Korea society is a big societal and medical issue. And that the third and fourth plan is to be more user-based, community-based, and tries to uh, connect the existing system rather than uh, creating a new one uh, to be cost effective. And that the national plan might have not been possible without the experience of uh, national medical insurance system or uh, backup from the legislations and previous experiences of local uh, dementia centers. Though some uh, national plan and projects have been modified due to the COVID-19 situation. We think uh, this change is merely a detour or just the speeding up of uh, coming uh, process. And we don't think it's a change from the goal or, dest of the, or the destination. And we hope that the convergence of ANSYS and the public health data and many other public databases will help us build better policies and to make the patient-oriented policies uh, in the ongoing fourth dementia plan. Thank you for your attention, and I hope uh, you enjoyed the talk. Professor Kim, I cannot thank you enough. This presentation was a tour de force. The four national dementia plans of Korea are extremely detailed, and what you've done is quite extraordinary, and I wish I'd listened to your presentation before going to Korea, it would have been much quicker for DY and I to get everything that we learned. I remember trying to make sense of the word ANSIM uh, and then eventually understanding what it, what it stood for. Um, I uh, really thank all of you that are putting um, in the uh, Q&A box some really, really <laughs> relevant and interesting questions. I'm hoping to be able to take them all at the end. And uh, in order to not waste time and leave more time for the q and I am going to hand the floor right now to Professor Yong Bing Be, who is going to um, talk to us about AI and diagnostics. Professor Be, the floor is yours. Thanks, Paula, for introducing me. 
Good morning and good evening, everyone. I'm Jong Bin Bae. It is great honor for me to speak in this ADI webinar. Today, I'd like to talk about AI-based dementia diagnostic tools. Next slide. First of all, I will tell you why we need AI technology to detect dementia. Then I'd like to introduce AI-based software our research team developed recently. Finally, I will suggest the future of diagnosis for dementia that AI technology may change. Next slide. Before we start, I'd like to ask what comes to mind when you think about South Korea. Some may think Korean foods such as kimchi, bulgogi, bibimbap. They are very delicious. I recommend you try them if you have not eaten Korean food before. Next slide. Or other may think K-pop stars such as BTS or Blackpink. Dynamite recorded by BTS picked at number one on the Billboard chart, topping the chart for three consecutive weeks. Next slide. In addition to Korean food and K-pop, South Korea is a country where the technology industry is well developed. An estimated 97% of South Korean use the internet and South Korea has the second fastest mobile internet connection speed in the world. In 2021, the country ranked first among the most innovative countries in the Bloomberg Innovation Index. Using this infrastructure, many researchers and engineers in South Korea have been trying to develop useful technologies that have diagnosis of various diseases. Next slide. Let's talk about why we need AI technology for dementia. AI can do what human can't do, take a long time to do, or what only professional can do. Next slide. Therefore, AI technology can do what medical staff and caregivers can't do, the things that take several minutes or hours for a clinician to do, or things only experienced clinician can do. Next slide. As you know, demand for dementia detection is rapidly increasing. In both high and low and middle income countries, population will continue to age. As you, use, you can see in this graph, the number of dementia patients will rapidly increase after 2030. In 2050, the number of people with dementia in the world is estimated to be 131 million. Next slide. Next, please. However, detection rates of dementia are low. From a systematic literature review and meta-analysis study, undetected dementia cases were up to 60%. It means that more than half of pa dementia patients in community are undetected and time of proper treatment and management is delayed. Low detection rate of dementia are due to high proportion of mild stage dementia, lack of knowledge of patients and their families, economic burden, and lack of expert who can diagnose dementia properly. Next slide. Usually, dementia patients would visit the hospital and clinician would interview them and decide whether the patient needs further assessment. If needed, the patient underwent neuropsychiatric tests, blood tests, and imaging. Based on the result, clinicians diagnose dementia and start medication such as acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. However, the process for dementia diagnosis is complex, costly, and requires multiple patient visits. Furthermore, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, 
Most memory clinics have had to suspend their activity because most dementia patients are a high risk and vulnerable group. Next slide. Early detection is important because early treatment and management of Alzheimer's disease can delay progression of disease. This study assessed the effect of postponing treatment for one year by comparing patients treated continuously for three years with those who received placebo for one year followed by medication for two years. As you can see in this graph, cognitive function of patients who start medication one year later was lower than those who start medication one year before. Next slide. As I mentioned previously, current diagnostic methods are complex, costly, and require multiple patient visits. If we had additional diagnostic tools that are simple, cheaper, and minimize patient visit, we can identify undetected dementia patients and treat and manage people with dementia earlier. We can use AI technology to develop this tool that analyze data such as genetic information, biosignals, and medical data. Next, I'd like to briefly introduce an AI-based software we developed recently. Brain MRI is the most effective tool to see brain structure and assess brain pathology, such as tumor, infection, atrophy, and ventricular enlargement. In South Korea, when covered by insurance, MRIs are taken at a cost of 200 to $250, which is a relatively low cost compared to other countries. The number of brain MRIs can rapidly increase in South Korea, as the coverage of national health insurance for brain MRIs expand. In 2000, 2019, about 1% of Koreans took brain MRI. In my experience, about half of patients who visited my clinic have had a brain MRI before. However, in cl clinical practice, evaluating dementia using brain MRI is still limited. Next slide. Brain MRI has useful features such as volume, shape, cortical thickness, and texture for Alzheimer's disease detection. However, there has been no software analyzing all these features together and identifying Alzheimer's disease. So we aimed to develop deep learning based software analyzing brain MRI and identifying Alzheimer's disease. Next slide. To collect data for deep learning, we used two sources. The first source was the brain MRI taken from the visitor to dementia clinic of Seoul National University Bundang Hospital. The second source was the brain MRI taken from the participant of a longitudinal course study, CLOSCAT. We collected about 2,000 brain MRIs and used them in development and validation of our deep learning algorithm. Next slide. We developed a pre-processing process of software as we can see in this figure. Software used the normal template which was developed from brain MRIs of 200 normal elderly Korean for transformation. When we input 3D T1 weighted MRI, the software transforms it and extracts brain. And then the software segments hippocampus regions that is closely associated with Alzheimer's disease and extracted 30 coronal slices which have a segmented section of a hippocampus. The pre-processing takes about 12 seconds in each MRI. Next slide. 30 extracted coronal slices are analyzed by deep neural network. We use inception v architecture, which is the most effective deep neural network for 2D image classification today. 
Through this neural network, 1,024 features are extracted from one slice. The software also adds three features such as age, sex, and slice location. The software analyzes all 30 slices and identifies Alzheimer's disease. Analyzing 30 slices using dim neural network takes 12 seconds. The whole process in total takes only 12 four seconds. Next slide. To validate our software, we constructed training data set and test data set using our hospital data set and ADNI data set. In each data set, we use 390 brain MRIs consisting of 195 scans of Alzheimer's disease patients and 195 scans of elders with normal cognition. The algorithm showed good performance in each data set. In ADNI data set, AUC was 0 0.94. In our hospital data set, AUC was 0 0.91. Next slide. In 2020, we conducted clinical trials for our software and I'd like to share the results. We retrospectively collected 164 brain MRIs of the elderly with normal cognition without amyloid deposition measured by amyloid path and 186 scans of MCI due to AD and dementia due to AD with amyloid deposition. And our software showed good performance with AUC of 0 0.937, sensitivity of 8, 86%, and specificity of 90%. Next slide. Based on the result of these clinical trials, Korean FDA approved our software as class three medical device for Alzheimer's detection. We hope that our software will contribute, contribute to identifying undetected dementia cases and diagnosing Alzheimer's disease earlier. Next slide. I direct end of my presentation by suggesting future of diagnosis for dementia. Currently, diagnosis and dementia are usually based in hospital. Therefore, awareness for dementia, accessibility of medical service, and presence of experienced professionals have affected the time of diagnosis. I don't think AI diagnostic tools will replace previous diagnostic methods. However, by applying AI technology, analyzing various data, such as that information, biosignal, and medical data, we can diversify ways of dementia diagnosis and identify undetected dementia cases and diagnose dementia earlier and timelier. I hope AI technology will overcome several limitations of current dementia diagnosis method, and the time will come when anyone can be diagnosed with dementia in a timely manner. That's all I have prepared today. Thank you for your attention. Professor Bae, thank you so much for this extraordinary presentation. I have been uh, working with a number of organizations lately on the journey of diagnosis and you have presented us here with a, a completely different view into that. I know that online there will be uh, some of the experts of McGill University who are preparing our own World Alzheimer's report on diagnosis and they may have a question for you but also they may be just trying to digest what you have just said. Uh, which is extraordinary. Now, we have a lot of questions, uh, and I would like to open the Q&A straight away with some questions from Professor Kim, whilst the question from Professor Be pour in. So, um, Professor Kim, uh, there are a number of really interesting uh, questions here. 
for example, and, and you have answered the, some of them I have seen, uh, are there gaps between standard model and regional model in terms of quality of the programs to deliver uh, to patients and their carers? Uh, would you care to answer that first? Uh, well, uh, there's no difference. Uh, there, actually, there is no standard model, but uh, the government uh, provided some uh, protocols for dementia uh, early detection and, and the services provided for the patient and their families and how to uh, go out in the field to uh, screening uh, the patients or uh, any potential subjects. Uh, but what I want to point out uh, is that uh, some uh, cities or rural areas uh, have their own uh, cultural background. For example, uh, in some rural area, uh, the subjects, the elderly uh, with high education is very low. And uh, there are some high illiteracy rate. In that case, you cannot use standard uh, cognitive screening test uh, to check uh, for the uh, cognitively impaired subjects. Uh, for that case, uh, the Korean government and many researchers have developed some uh, cognitive screening uh, tool that is independent from literacy. You, you do not have to read any contents. You, you just have pictures and they have very high correlation of the uh, MMSE or any other standard screening tools. Uh, that can be an, uh, another example uh, of uh, tailored uh, program for the dementia centers. And another center is using telephone interview uh, for the cognitive screening or other services are provided online. So uh, we have developed TICS, telephone interview-based cognitive screening. And uh, that tool also has uh, some high uh, valid and reliable correlation with the, the standard models. So uh, in this every area in evaluation and treatment and management and care, you can develop your own uh, need specific tools. And that's what we are doing too. And it is not complete yet. Thank you so much. I'll put quickly another question to you. Um, Somebody is asking, are all people in Korea uh, able to afford medical aid? They are based in South Africa where that would not be possible. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, maybe Korea is not a big country, a very small one. And uh, maybe uh, South Korean uh, people have uh, the uh, population density is very high. And uh, since uh, the age of this uh, media, uh, people, the cultural differences of the whole nation is very small. The discrepancies between urban area and rural areas are very small. So basically uh, the people are living in one cultural uh, model. And uh, maybe 20 to 30 years before, uh, there are many elderly who have been, uh, who are having a different background, educational background, and they have been go through uh, several uh, world wars and Korean war and the highly industrializing process. But uh, since the last 20 years, the uh, people's experiences, social experience, are uh, pretty much the same. So probably uh, this uh, is a, a kind of, uh, this provides uh, some homogeneity uh, in the uh, service uh, to be provided. 
Sorry, thank you very much, Professor Kim. One last question to you before I pass to one to Professor Bear. This question is from Hilary Doxford and is received a few likes. It's great to see an aim of reducing the burden of care. What care burdens are you targeting and how do you hope to achieve it? Complicated question. Uh, may I ask whose question was that? Uh, I didn't catch it. Uh, yes, uh, it's question number one in the Q&A. Great to see that you have an aim to reduce the burden of care. But what care burden are you targeting? So what's the target of care burden? And how are you hoping to achieve the reduction? Oh, uh, it's a very uh, broad question, I think. Yeah, very big. <laughs> yes. And uh, I think uh, the National Dementia Plan, and uh, there are many stakeholders and many parties to be involved. And I think the aim, even though uh, the goal is set by the government, uh, it is not, uh, it can be changed. And I think uh, the most uh, characteristic, uh, big characteristic of uh, past national dimension plans are, it, uh, it lies in the flexibility of the goals. And as you can see in the uh, 2017 uh, declaration, uh, the government, especially the President Moon government, the current government, uh, has uh, progressive uh, ideals uh, compared to the conservative parties uh, uh, governments uh, before. And people might have some different goals and different aims in uh, the realization of dementia plans. Uh, but we, I think uh, we have to gather all the various opinions and come up with some uh, common sense goal uh, for the national plans or local plans uh, to be implemented. Thank you very much. That was a difficult question to answer. There's tons of other questions. We'll try and also pass some of the questions to our speakers that can go back to you. I'd like to ask one question to Professor Be before I close this webinar. And that is, Professor Be, if you consider that your ideas could work in other countries, how do you envisage that this program could work in other countries based on what you know of diagnostics in other countries? Thank you. It is a very important question. Uh, we hope our software would be used in many other countries, but the number of brain MRI scan is very different from country to country. Elderly people can take brain MRI easily in some country like South Korea, but brain MRI can only be taken under limited condition in some country. In this country, the use of our software would be limited. However, what I emphasize is that the software what I introduced today is just one example of an AI-based diagnostic tools. Each country has different data that can be used for the development of AI-based diagnostic tool. In our country, most dementia patients took brain MRI, and we had a lot of brain MRI data to develop AI-based software. In other countries, there may be other source of data to develop AI service. So I think that Using this data, we can develop most effective AI-based diagnostic tool suitable for each country, and we can detect more people with dementia earlier and timelier using this AI tool. Thank you very much, Professor Be. I think this is all we have time for in questions. As I said, for those of you that have not had questions answered, and believe me, I understand you because when I went to Korea, I had a question a minute for about a whole week. So it's so much to learn here. We could have gone on for hours. 
Uh, we'll try and help you with the answers. Also, can I remind you the webinar is being recorded. It will be available on YouTube. So you will be able to re-see this presentation. The next slide, please. Um, I also would like to remind all of you, please, that the next big webinar public we are having is on the 26th of May. This is the big one where we publish the plan to impact report at uh, the World Health Assembly side event. We will have an amazing array of speakers and please do tune in because we need to put pressure on the World Health Organization to consider the plight of people living with dementia, especially during COVID-19 and make sure that the target of the Global Dementia Action Plan are not forgotten. So your presence there to make your weight felt is particularly important. Please put it in your diaries. Now, my last slide, as usual, is not just to say thank you. It is to say thank you, but also to remind you that you can follow what ADI does on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, everywhere, Facebook. Please do. It's really important you do. It's really important that you add your voice to the movement and make our working more impactful and the learning of people like Professor Kim and Professor Bea even more important. So DY, Professor Kim, Professor Bea, thank you so much. It has been an honor to share a platform with you. And goodbye, everybody, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.